in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you oh, and i will ever pray Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever serve you. in your way or step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days hey oh God you are my God and I with a promise that no man who walked with him will walk in darkness Lord we acknowledge your light we acknowledge your wisdom I join your people to say thank you thank you for everything you have done we will never never be able to thank you enough for lives changed Lord if there is anything that has happened through my life if there is anything that has happened through this ministry we owe it all up to you and we're not ashamed to say thank you tonight receive all the praise this is what it's all about and lord we decree and declare that we are committed to following you i'm committed to following you that you will speak to us and cause that we hear you even when it does not make sense cause us to trust you cause us to believe you may we never be ahead of you oh god may we always allow you to lead in the name of jesus and lord we renew once again as a ministry our covenant of partnership 
that oh god we remain followers pursuers seekers of your presence seekers of your ways you made your ways known to moses and lord we declare in the name of your son that we will follow it doesn't matter we will follow regardless of how comfortable or otherwise it is we will follow you in the name of jesus so father we dedicate this moment very precious moment to you i thank you for your people the workers in this ministry the leaders in this ministry all those connected to this ministry the financial partners who have lifted our hands through their seats and sacrifices those who have labored in secret and in open to see your glory come i pray oh god that you bless them let no man go unrewarded receive all the glory in the name of jesus christ amen and amen god bless you thank you spiritual intelligence I didn't meet the testimonies but I heard everyone rejoicing so I want to believe they were powerful testimonies let me just say something before we get to the word um, thank you so much for not only believing in the ministry for believing in me and what God is doing in my life I know that you love me I know that you believe me you believe in the anointing thank you so much for your partnership but then I just want to say two things very quickly. Number one, I want you to trust the things you are learning here. Praise the Lord. Um, while we were on our way back from the trip, my mind was on the meeting and I was just thinking, there are very anointed men and women of God in this place who I would have easily just called and said, look, I'm so tired, I'm worn out, please can I rest? have a crusade tomorrow and say look let me just rest bless the people of god by god's grace we're connected to very anointed and blessed people that love me and believe in what god is doing and i could easily just call them and say look come and be a mighty blessing to the people of god i don't do these things by myself just because i am not replaceable that's not the idea there is a picture that the lord has shown me about what he wants us to become are we together now every teaching listen carefully every truth that you hear being shared here was not emotionally fabricated to keep ministry going i wish you understand what goes in to bring every word here I preach an average of two to four messages every week it is hard work to prepare a message very hard work are we together aside from the prayers the preparation the physical constraint the research etc i do these things because there is something god is making us become please i want to encourage everyone don't just believe in me and love me and trust me which i greatly appreciate but submit yourself to the things you are learning these keys will make you become something there is an end some of us by the grace of god are already tasting of this mold we're already seeing how much our lives are becoming some of us are just catching up and others have tested of this for a while but i want to encourage you every series every teaching just follow them the way they are don't try to tamper with any equation you are giving be that childlike and watch something happen in your life are we together i think it's quite arrogant for anyone to not have result and criticize anybody who has it archbishop benson idahosa said um you only have a right to criticize a person when you can do twice what he has done once our society is full of people who believe they know what they are doing and you see the trouble about this pride is that the nonsense will not show now after years of wasting your time you will find out that the bible calls it shadow boxing but the apostle said we have not taught you 
cunningly devise fables the things you are learning here are not my ideas they are older than me the truths that come here represent the wisdom of God you hear me sing that song though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river there are people who have crossed this river we are not trying to invent something new there's nothing about the anointing that is new there's nothing about generational impact that is new so i want to encourage us pay attention to these things don't get so familiar and then don't listen no open up your heart don't just write don't just say amen don't just fall down don't just roll believe it receive it in your heart and be diligent be diligent to apply it listen i give you one guarantee let me tell you this and i've been saying this for many years you will never never fail if you listen to what i'm telling you believe me there are people who will think these things are just jargons and then after many years the danger is they will now have children and families yet they don't have an idea of the systems of God and they will frustrate a whole generation as a result of their ignorance I do not take your word lightly it is capable of changing my life it is capable of bringing the anointing into my life. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever see It's your spirit that opens to me the treasures of your word I will forever sing your name I will sing I will sing of the wonders of your word I will sing out for joy Last week we began a series that is aimed at giving us spiritual intelligence. Please listen. It is dangerous to live in ignorance as to the systems of the spirit. You hear me repeat some of these things again and again. Your victory and my victory in this life is not only dependent on what Christ has done but dependent on our comprehending the same and applying the principles that will make it happen in our lives. The disaster that occur in several lives regardless of what Christ has done is proof that the work of Christ by itself will not bring you results. Are we together? There must be an understanding and we must know how to engage the word and um, there are a number of concepts that we discussed we took one last week which was the spirituality of life that was the first intelligence that the Lord began to walk in our minds and we investigated this very thoroughly life is spiritual how many of you were blessed last week yeah it is important for us to understand the spirituality of life life is not scientific life is not intellectual life is not emotional life is spiritual are we together and the earlier we understood spiritual things and how to navigate the part of life the earlier we came to this understanding the better the swifter our progress would manifest there are so many people who trivialize the spirituality of life 
and um, it is to their detriment everything about your life to this moment is spiritual so we'll continue we'll take on one just four concepts in this series that I believe that the Lord wants to burn in our heart number two God is almighty write it down and then listen to me number one life is spiritual that's the first intelligence you need to have if you want to reign second God is almighty Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 17 media let's work together Deuteronomy 10 17 you will never be able to obey God listen carefully you will never be able to do the giant things that the Lord desires from you fulfill purpose an assignment if you do not have a revelation of the might of God you can have a revelation of his love you can have a revelation of his goodness but if you want to command victory in your life you need to know that God is not mighty he is all mighty Deuteronomy chapter 10 okay verse 17 let me just read it from here if you have it let's read it together if you don't i'll just read alone one to read for the lord your god is god of gods a mighty and an awesome god who regarded not persons nor take it reward some version says nor take it bribe it says for the lord your god is what god of i've taught you what this means that every time one thing is compared against another is trying to show the all surpassing excellency so he says this lord your god that you serve he's not just one of the gods he's not just one of the lords please listen this God that we serve is not just the best option of the many. He is the only option available. There are so many people who cannot obey God today. There are so many people who cannot believe God. So many pastors, businessmen, family people are unable to receive the instructions of God. Are unable to take steps of faith. Not because they cannot read their Bibles they do not know how mighty and how great God is one of the things that you must burn in your spirit as you begin your journey to greatness is to know that God is mighty mighty Savior he can move the mountains listen to this song my God is mighty to save he is mighty to say forever he's the author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave jesus conquered there is nothing the lord will ask me to do that i will be afraid of no i have caught a revelation of how mighty he is the reason why many people cannot obey god is not because they are disobedient they do not know that he is mighty. Listen, look at this. Come, Sam. If, if I tell Sam, I will buy you a car tomorrow, he will not just laugh. The first thing Sam will do is to look at me and evaluate me, my capacity financially, based on whatever information he has at his disposal. Is that true? So Sam will look at me. If Sam does not know me, he will go and ask someone who knows me is this guy wealthy enough to be able to buy you a car at will if he receives a testimony of my ability sam will now stand and say i can believe you is that true if i if i say right now everyone in koinonia just be listening to me welfare department go and buy minerals just pass it around you will never look and say apostle don't deceive us how much is minerals are we together so it's easy to believe me 
because subconsciously you have an understanding that I am able. Now, if I say everybody just sit down, we're going to pass car keys around. You will say amen. But what you mean is the prophecy for car keys because you look around and imagine. So when God says, I will bless you, your understanding of him will judge what he has said. And you say, Lord, I trust you, but it's well. I, you have a track record of fooling men. God is almighty. So God can speak to you and say, son, do this, do that. Let me tell you something. God never gives you instructions based on your ability. He speaks to you as though he's talking to himself. So don't be surprised to hear how, how challenging his instructions will come. When God speaks to you, he speaks to himself. So he's not going to degrade his standards just because your mind is trying to comprehend him. Are we together? It's up to you by the ministry of the word and the spirit to rise in understanding and get to a point where you will count him faithful. That was the testimony of Abraham. The Bible says Abraham, although he was an hundred years, he counted God faithful. And so he wavered not at his faith through unbelief. One day God will stand up and say, son, it's time to build a big cathedral. Son, it's time to do this. I will be stupid to stand and say, God, don't, don't disappoint me. No, no. I have made promises to people as a man. And I've seen how they just rejoiced. Oh, I will give you 10 naira. I will help you to pay your school fees. And they jump. I've not given them any money. Didn't give them any check. They just started jumping around. What if I change my mind? You don't think I will. So you are happy. Our unbelief is proof we do not know God is almighty. So when he told you you will marry, you are still asking him questions. Lord, can't you just give me date and let two of us rest? <laughs> I will bless you and you will prosper. Oh God, when? When? Do you know? Do you know worry is a sign of lack of faith? Worry, believe me when I tell you this, it's an uncomfortable truth. Worry is a sign of lack of faith. No. When he's in charge, when you are in charge with him, there is no reason, no reason, no reason. This is the revelation that is responsible for confidence. When you see people move around, it's not as if there is a charm in their pocket. But I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able. Looking at the great things that God has done today, here now is not six years. It's just koinonia that is six years. The meeting here. But even at this, it is still a humbling experience. Watching the things that God has done by his grace. Seeing the many things. Seeing his word come to pass. Do you believe him? Do you truly believe God? Don't tell me you believe God until you know that he is mighty. Not just that he's mighty, he's willing to hold your hands. When a man is willing to help you, and you know that person has capacity to help you, you trust him. The word trust is from the word bata. It's best described, Pastor Alpha's son is not even considering whether his father's hand is tired. He's sitting happily and playing, while the father takes responsibility for bringing the child here. It's called trust. The child has had a track record in his little life that my father loves me but my father is also strong strong enough and so he can afford to move around not minding whether the father is uncomfortable or not did God ever tell you he's tired of holding you did God ever tell you he, he needed assistance his hand was paining him God is not Moses the keeper of Israel the Bible says he neither sleeps. What kind of a being is that? You don't sleep nor slumber. The Bible says there is no searching of his understanding. 
there's too much unbelief there are very few people that believe God you see it in their lives although they claim they trust him but the, 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 the way we act shows we don't trust him I believe him that's the song he's able he's able he's able to bless you he's able to keep you he's able to bring his word to pass in your life god is almighty he's not going to borrow power from someone else and return it no he didn't store the power somewhere else he's not signing like a check like you go to the bank and plead with them to do a transfer no he is almighty no man voted him into power listen he doesn't store his anointing somewhere and he's insecure if they will take it the bible says once have i spoken twice have you heard uh-huh help me that all 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 he never said he's the only one who can use it but he said it belongs to him alone witches can use it by certain manipulations of the laws of the spirit but hear me brothers and sisters all power the power to make wealth kabaratoshia the power for favor the power for increase the power for breakthrough the power for children the power that swallows up challenges that power belongs to god know this listen let me tell you ask anyone who knows me i thank god i've taught you about the gift of men i've taught you about the ministry of men but god cursed be i the day i will leave god to put my eye in a mortal man believing that he's the one who will help me look in my little life i have seen the inconsistencies of men it is foolish for me to sit down and tie my destiny to the word of a man no sir no sir no sir i judge him faithful i can tell you i want to help you and get angry tomorrow and say pastor alpha you offended me i will punish you i won't help you again that's a man for you i can say i want to help you but me too i was expecting help from some, from somebody how powerless that can be you are standing in the middle of help to help but there's no helper of god he checked around and nobody was greater than him so he swore by his name that by these two immutable things it is impossible listen i'm speaking to someone here you better believe god and say lord if you spoke to me about your my destiny let's go i believe i like joshua and caleb he said let us go up at once look at david who is this uncircumcised philistine the, 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 this all this fear about our lives fear about the future fear about ministry will i be rich will i marry will i have children how many will my pregnancy stay will i die will a plane crash will they can't jam me all those things are results hear me will crowds come for my meeting what if they get angry one day and don't like me again those thoughts are a product of a lack of knowledge about how mighty god is i sing that song again savior he can move the mountains my god is mighty to save he is mighty to save forever author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave jesus conquered the grave savior talk like this I, I know what some of you are thinking when you hear people talk like this you just say they are lucky I mean you have food to eat you have this thing they kept in front 
as though we were born like that let me tell you something very few people in this life even historically were ever born with any privilege it takes an understanding i remember clearly when the lord would speak to me in the secret no results no results but i believed him i remember when he told me he would anoint me and he would do great things i remember when he began to give the blueprint of E and I, the blueprint of i remember those little instructions he gave on our way to crusade grounds hoping the world will work let me tell you something hey, Jimmy, come come let me tease this guy small i love him he's my friend you see when we started out let me tell you something that time it wasn't like a crowd like this there were few people now i remember clearly i told them that when we went to the crusade ground we we're going to meet all kinds of people blind sick and all of that and i think he thought we we're joking and we had already planned that that time everybody was a minister it wasn't like you're in welfare you don't mm -mm. so when it was time to pray you would just choose at random you didn't have the privilege to know what was wrong until you stood in front of the person are we together now and i remember very clearly a jimmy then and jakes when i started saying all those things a jimmy got troubled one time and he said come on let's let's really find out are we going to how you know trying to find out i hope this anointing works i hope those devils are going to be cast out i remember i, I hope you can remember i remember one of the, the first day of the crusade two of our ladies they now went to meet a woman you remember the story they went to meet a woman who was deaf and dumb you know they came with all the zeal had received impartation we had fasted our lives i mean we're looking like skeletons and then the ladies now laid hands you know oh god you spoke to joshua selman and i'm telling you that woman was just looking like this no miracle no healing it was so embarrassing the ladies tried how many of you know that when you try you go around and go around nothing happens i remember one person a jimmy i think it was a jimmy that wanted to minister to a young boy and the boy looked at him and said can you see that tree sir he said we have tied people on it he said he can go and call what did he say he wants to go to the market and call the other people that tied somebody. yes <laughs> a very small child i remember the shock on a jimmy's face listen we didn't look like much then but we believed him the third day of the crusade the deaf and dumb woman spoke her ears open remember the first day nothing happened it was so embarrassing so embarrassing for the ladies they came and met me i said don't worry try it do it again your faith and then on the third day i just got angry i said okay you people have tried look this moment let's deal with this thing before these villagers kill us here see you know why i'm telling you this and why i called him it was faith i remember while we were preparing for the crusade he took his computer his personal computer he was the only one who had a computer then not a laptop a big screen computer he took everything and put it on sale to carry all the money and supply for the crusade these are hidden stories that you may never never know never knew i dedicated my scholarship 100 percent 100 percent 100 percent for the crusade sacrifices why because we knew god was mighty at a point we didn't have the money to pay where we lodged people as at that morning we were in trouble so we went to greet the king when we went to greet the king we exchanged pleasantries greeted him in the palace and then prayed for him we had a session with the pastors a pastor's conference it was a wonderful time people sowed some seeds plus the seed the king sent that was how we gathered the money listen there was no assurance no uncle no auntie no partner but god everybody shout but god thank you jimmy i love you god bless you but god when you bring god into the equation the calculation changes you have to know that i had fainted the bible says but god but god the psalmist said if the lord had not been our help now may israel say 
if the Lord had not been our help listen every other thing should happen to you but God I'm prophesying to somebody the shame should come but God the interceptor every other thing should come but God the trouble should come but God when you add God to the equation the calculation changes God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent one of the mysteries that are responsible for fearsome results responsible for the strange breakthrough in the lives of men is absolute trust in God based on an understanding of who he is he says be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might the revelation that he is mighty be strong let your stability be upon that I know I do not have the rent but God is faithful I don't know how it will happen but one thing I know is this God will help me he said I will lift up my eyes onto the hills from whence cometh my help he says my help cometh from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth apostle my father is dead I understand but God is still alive apostle my mother is dead my sisters have found that because I became a Christian no sponsor apostle there is there is no helper no there is a helper He's the one who can help men. Look, when God decides to come into your life and help you, you will be scared at the result. There is something called the help of men. We are products. Ebenezer, thus far, has the Lord helped. He says Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped of the Lord. There are many people who remove God out of the equation of their lives. So they look at you and say, but I'm more intelligent than you. Why is your life making progress? Because I, I kept, I didn't add God. I put him in front of me. There are many arrogant people believing they, they do every calculation by themselves. Then they say, God, where are you? Just come and join the queue. Some of us have learned. We put God in front and we foolishly follow. Foolishly follow. If he moves this way, wherever we are, we turn back and say, God, let's keep going. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, what will happen? I shall fear no evil. Why? Not because I'm masculine. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Then he says, thou preparest a table for me. In the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. Do you trust God? Do you believe God? It's a little teaching, but let me tell you something. Your life will be challenged by circumstances that will require your faith in God. No matter how hardworking you are, a day will come the only person you can cry to. I want you to glue this understanding hold his hands and never let him go you're all I want you're everything Lord. you're all have ever needed you're all Wait. Give me you. I hold on now today. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Hallelujah. The only guarantee to your journey of life. Is his presence and his word 
his presence and his word men will fail you not may fail will fail prepare for it the best and the most reliable of all of us will still fail brothers and sisters please listen to me so that you stop yourself from receiving heart shattering heartbreak i don't trust men no i don't i receive of their ministry but only as accredited by god i have pledged my life that anything god cannot give me let no man claim he can give me no sir no sir if god cannot lift this ministry i will be a liar together with any other person who joins me to believe no he said which of you by worrying can add one cubit one cubit one strand of hair is god blessing us everybody say god is almighty, god is almighty. In, my in my life say it again god is almighty, god is almighty. in my life lift your voice in one minute and say lord i permit you to show your might i'm tired of doubting you i'm restraining your hand i'm restraining your hand uh, there is more that you can do there is more there is more that you can do I have restrained your hand through my unbelief. They limited God by saying, Can God, can God, can God bless me in Zaria? Can He bless me in Zaria? Where are the helpers? No. The God I serve is dependable. Dependable, dependable, hey, dependable God. sit down but in one minute I want you to look at the mountain that has threatened God in your life and I want you to prophesy say my God can handle you lift your voice and pray say it my God can handle you I may not have what it takes but my God can handle you no my God can handle you pray my God can handle you the shame and reproach I may not be able to do anything about it but my God can handle you the stagnation and delay the lack of results and lack of progress my God can handle you
47 verse 5 quickly I'm shaking unbelief in your life shaking unbelief in your life God is a mighty God he's the almighty not an almighty the almighty no options no one above him no one above him thank you Sam he says great is our Lord and of great what power then he says his understanding this is the mystery behind his power his understanding is infinite now when you meet such a man never leave him his understanding is infinite great is our lord and of great power he says his understanding his comprehension is infinite i trust him I believe him you know we when Ogun we came in um, left this morning and um, while I just passed the whole Lagos about an expressway down I kept seeing different camps prayer camps belonging to different ministries and I thought for a while one day all of them were in their rooms and God came to them and said I will make you great do you believe me and they were stupid enough to say yes some could not speak english but they said yes mm. had no connection some no education but they said yes it is when the results happen people start admiring you no the mission is follow me if you can have that rugged faith to follow him you will return with a testimony please i want you to bond this every time challenges overwhelm you every time you come to a point where you don't know what to do meditate on the might the might of god i like angel michael when they started fighting with lucifer over the body of moses this is what he said he said i will not bring any railing accusation against you but this is my verdict the lord i invoke a power greater than me the lord rebuke you You've been trying to fight many battles on your own it will soon kill you there are some battles that will eat you up on your own there are many young men trying to fight the battle of finances by themselves i'm brilliant i'm not daft you will soon die the the visit the reality of the economy will swallow you up you better humble yourself and say lord lead me i'm not ashamed to declare that i do not know if you don't lead me the Bible says trust in the Lord with all your heart Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 6 says and lean not on your own understanding right it says in all your ways verse 6 now acknowledge him and he will make straight your path 7 says be not wise in your own eyes it says fear the Lord and turn away depart all this do you know why many people don't trust God 
this macho man bold face thing that they want to do to life listen it's good to be bold but we make our boast in the lord when you remove him out of the question you are boasting and you must defend yourself indeed we make our boast all day long the psalmist says your confidence in life is not just because of your intellectual capacity your confidence in life is not just because you think you went to school go and find out how many graduates are moving around as if they are holding a tissue paper your confidence in life is not because you think you can speak english your confidence is not because you think you look good <sighs> there is one mighty strong strong mighty you threaten me he will answer you mm. You will hear my voice in that equation. He will echo. And when God speaks, everything, if you speak to me, it's only me that will respond to you. But when God speaks, everything will answer. Everything. Please tap into this understanding. I'm giving you spiritual intelligence. Don't ever say they are basic. Leave God out of your life and watch the way the enemy will eat you. Leave the understanding of the almightiness of god and show me how you will ever build a house show me how you will ever build a ministry show me how you will ever build a business it will it will so shock you take god away that is a a, a mountain that cannot be surmounted but bring him into the equation and he will cause it to tremble before you now the thing is men don't see him they see only you so they think you are the one doing it alone it's up to you to be smart enough to keep his presence by being an usher and pointing men back to him and say look i know you saw only one person walking but we are two and actually i'm only the second of the two not the first there is one in front of me i am a product of his wisdom i am a product of his leadership there is this treasure he says in earthen vessels that the excellency of power might be of god not of the vessel please repent from this unnecessary vain confidence in yourself i will do this i am smart the way i'm anointed is impossible for me to not have an anointed ministry you are joking go and find out how many people see jesus almost every day and don't have up to 10 people in their church it's not because they are going to hell if it does not give you these keys he says a man can receive nothing except it is given if it is not given to you you can't have it it's impossible what an awesome God you are you're an awesome awesome what an awesome God you are You're an awesome Number three Ready? The third key Man will always have a role to play man will always have a role to play in fulfilling god's word in his life man will always have a role to play i'm giving you spiritual intelligence so you don't waste your time asking why things are not happening man will always have a role to play someone is being delivered already from this statement your role is not taking the place of prophecy but it controls manifestation between thus saith the lord and it came to pass you have a role deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 man will always always the love of god is unconditional but his blessings are conditional 
the love of God is unconditional but his blessings are conditional here's what it says and it shall come to pass if thou shalt uh -huh, listen diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe pay attention then number two to do all his commandments which I commanded this day that the Lord thy God will do what set thee on high above all nations of the earth verse 2 and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee what's the condition if thou shalt hearken verse 2 just stop there if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God he didn't say if God speaks he will set you on top as powerful as his voice is it requires a partnership are we together how many believers sit down there is a very sad statement that is used especially around the north that's to mean it was so prepared by God no I believe in the sovereignty of God there are things that are written there is how God can veto in a man's life but it is not in his character to veto over everything are we together so if I'm poor it's the will of God if the ministry refuses to grow is the will of God no 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 the will of God is not hidden he has made known unto us the mystery of his will it's clear I know the thoughts that I think towards you Jeremiah 29 11 thoughts of peace and not of evil not of evil not of evil not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end that means if my life is not bringing me a future and an expected end I know that something is wrong I can't sit down stupidly say no this this has to be God no 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 I know his ways it's not a mystery I know there are challenges I know there is a fullness of affliction I know there are seasons but I also know that the times are in the hands of God he said until the word of the Lord came to him the word of the Lord tried him right but when that word came he prevailed over it in the dealings of God with man you don't suffer forever no sir understand the ways of God so that you don't sit down giving God thanks over things you should be rebuking hallelujah If the membership of koinonia begins to reduce i won't sit down and say it's the will of god he's driving wrong people that's nonsense we know that there is a spirit destroying men because it is the will of god that all men might be saved all men there's no such thing as the crowd does not matter it does the ministry of the kingdom is a ministry of multitudes when you understand your partnership you will know what is demonic you will know what is a process you will know what to give thanks for and what to cast and bind there are too many believers who just sit down and say whatever will be will be unfortunately it's what you don't like that will be are we together everybody hates me they are not nice to me say well maybe that's how my life is it will continue like that you have not sat down to say could there be the manifestation of an evil spirit in my life that is bringing this rain of bad luck i'm such a nice personality but why is it that people cannot help me when you begin to probe and look at things then the lord will show you your own role and say this is what you have neglected this do and you will see the hand of god everyone say i have a role say it loud i have a role to play in the fulfillment of God's word over my life and destiny say it again I have a role to play in the fulfillment of God's word over my life and destiny say it one last time I always have a role to play in the fulfillment of God's word over my life and destiny never allow anybody listen never allow anybody indoctrinate you into believing you will sit down and cross your leg and things will happen no sir even science refuses that even science refuses that nothing moves by itself right 
Yeah, the first law of mechanics, science people. A body remains in a state of uniform motion or a static state till an external force acts upon it. Otherwise, meaning if I leave this here and there is no force acting, it will remain there forever. Your destiny is like this object. It will remain in one place. The day God wants to change, I know my God, he will arise. You know your God, but he will not arise. You provoke his hand to arise for you. God will deliver me. You people should just keep watching. No. There is what you must do. Good master, what shall I do to be saved? That's why the man was rich. What shall I do? He knew he had a role to play. Not all God save me. That's what the other guy said on the cross. We are here. It's true. We are thieves. But what did you even say? And Jesus looked at him. The other one said, look, we are sinners. Lord, we take responsibility. Say, you, you will be with me this day in paradise. The other guy, still on the cross as a thief and a criminal, was not repentant. I'm somebody who is obsessed with a sense of responsibility. I, I detest irresponsibility of any kind. Especially spiritual irresponsibility. If my life will rise, it's up to God in partnership with my cooperation. Still on this point, I want you to write this down. Are you getting blessed tonight? Just listen to what I'm telling you and you'll be surprised to see how your life will change. Write this down. Still on that point. Three. Your part will have to be based on knowledge and understanding. Your part will have to be based on knowledge and understanding. In as much as it is important to take action, that action must be based on knowledge and understanding, not emotions, not suggestions, not guessing. You see, the thing about God is he clarifies what role you have to play. Moses, stretch forth your rod. It didn't say, Moses, just do whatever you want to do. I'm just there. No, stretch forth your rod. Jericho, Joshua, tell the people to go around Jericho. Specific instruction. Once every one of the six days and on the seventh day they go seven times after that together with the priest they raise a shout specific rule proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 we we'll look at two scriptures so many people are attempting to cooperate with god but they are doing it in ignorance now when you when you walk in ignorance you alienate yourself from the possibilities that are, that are contained in God. Proverbs 4 verse 7. Let's look at it. Proverbs 4 verse 7. Let's turn it here for time's sake. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7. It says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Then he says, and with all thy getting, do what? Get understanding. Wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. Wisdom tells you to cook. Understanding tells you how to combine the ingredients. Wisdom tells you you have a great destiny. Understanding tells you the path to take. That's why he says, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. There are similar roles, but they are not the same. A light to your path. Direction. A lamp to your feet. Guidance. A light to your path. Direction. Listen, if you come and you're looking for direction, I'll tell you, okay, go left. You're going to see two roads. Follow the left one. Turn. That's direction. But when I tell you, let's walk together and we get to a place, I say, okay, move with me. That's guidance. The word of God both guides and directs. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So God shows you where to go and guides you on how to go there. Make sure that you understand what to do before you start doing it. Don't just say, wow, this tight. Let, okay. Since prosperity is tied to tithing and all of that, let me just tithe. You may be taking the action, 
but is it based on knowledge and understanding you can frown your face and come and squeeze an envelope and stand as if you are going to stone God with money and drop it in the offering basket as though you are bribing a man and go back and find out that your heaven still remain closed because it is not the substance it is the understanding the insight is what gives life to the action are you seeing that now yeah so you are praying for the sick and you are saying in the name of Jesus be healed but you think he's just about speaking so you are saying be healed be healed be healed and the person is not being healed you are still mentioning the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus be healed be anointed the power of God will touch people right now everybody you ask them to shout everything I receive shout Jesus shout fire shout water shout and everybody is just looking at you like a rock I say you are such a bunch of unbelievers here you are you are trying to insult the grace of God on my life then you start making reference to meetings that's what people do when they don't have result is it not you that came in 1991 remember that meeting Bible says Jesus the same yesterday today and forever don't bring Jesus of yesterday for us we want to see the Jesus of today alive and strong but that's what happens to people let your action be based on knowledge knowledge okay what is the revelation behind tithing why does tithing open the heavens wow tithing is my spiritual circumcision Tithing is my proof of obedience. Tithing is not a proof of love. Giving is a proof of love. Tithing is a proof of obedience. Tithing does not mean you love God. Tithing just means you are obedient. Because an exact figure was given to you. So I begin to study it. I see those who gave their tithe and the results that followed. And then light breaks out. And now I package my tithe with understanding so i come and while i'm singing i'm in the worship team and i'm trusting that every time i lift up my voice people get blessed i know that it's not just a nice voice and beautiful melodies i go and begin to study what is it about music and worship and i begin to find out ah this is how it works now on the strength of that understanding when i lift a song i'm lifting that song from an understanding that understanding will allow a dimension of the grace of God to flow through that song and you find out that people become a reflection of your understanding never do things because people are doing it spend time to seek knowledge and understanding then you take an enlightened step take an enlightened step everybody is doing business to prosper you too you go and do it no what is the purpose of it Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. The Bible talks about those who are alienated. Alienated from the life of God through ignorance. Alienated from the life of God through ignorance. Through ignorance. Through ignorance. Are we together? Yeah. There are people who, although they are supposed to be walking in certain realities, they exempted themselves through ignorance being alienated from the life of God and the Bible says through ignorance I am always passionate about a revelation of the areas where I do not know I'm not too proud to learn I always want to know what am I doing wrongly what when I find knowledge that is relevant to me I jump at it with all my heart I know you have been taking action but is it based on insight is it based on revelation you saw people anointing themselves you went to go and buy goya oil and you brought it and all of a sudden you opened a bottle and drank small rub small on your head rub small on your hand went to sleep and a spirit sat on you 10 minutes later and he said my god with this oil yes with the oil you carried your bible and put it under your bed and while you slept you had the worst dream even the day you slept watching a film you had a good dream but now you put your bible because it's not in actions revelation there are too many people who don't pay attention to revelation revelation 
Ephesians 1 17 Paul speaking says for this cause I Paul bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him your eyes being enlightened or flooded with light that you may know come into a comprehension come into an understanding of a reality it is important for us to know I like it to say in the name of Jesus Lord take away ignorance from my life say it again take away ignorance you know let me tell you something the little understanding that God has given me about certain kingdom realities the mysteries of the kingdom I watch how people break these laws every day and want to succeed and want to do well I watch pastors break the laws that bring success in ministry I watch business people break the laws that bring success in business I watch leaders break the laws that bring uncommon results. I watch people who want the anointing break almost every law that brings it. You see, enlightenment is very powerful. Because when you are moving in darkness, you don't even know. And so you keep trying. This is not working. But I fasted 30 days. I thought at the end of 30 days, an angel will appear to me and say, from this day, I give you a mantle. Receive it. You collect it and... And nothing happens and yet you see how effortless certain people move in the grace and the power of God as though God owes them his presence and power you've got to find out it's not just in saying the power of God is moving it's not just in saying this and that and that no as I pass Lagos about an expressway today I saw the predictability of the results of the people you know most of those fathers of faith came from the same background the same background the apostolic church aladura cac that background regardless of what they have now so certain foundational things were functional regardless of what the ministry is crowds space they caught a revelation of space they don't buy small things they buy kilometers not plots and expand it I've had the privilege to see photos of some of these ministries in some nations that are racist nations yet they gave them land it's a grace now they may not have as much revelation as you do but sadly they have more results which do you prefer the end of everything brothers and sisters is results hearing is my father glorified that you bear much fruit not that you learn about plants that you bear much fruit you can learn all you can about plants but if you cannot bear fruit you are not glorifying the father your action must be based on light and that means you must contend for light let me tell you how i study i write out the areas of my life where i have seen some measure of result and i celebrate and thank god then I write out the areas in my life where I'm trusting God for results or greater results. And then I begin to study from the word of God and secondly from the life of those who have commendably produced results in that area. That's how you get results. That's how you get results. I'm not going to study somebody who is not working in the anointing if I want to work in the anointing. I will love the person I will respect the part the fact that he is part of the body but he has nothing to teach me about the anointing it's not working in his life so I will find somebody who represents the hand of God to the degree to which I desire and humbly study to the degree to which I desire there may be many of them but I must find the one that reflects my expectation then I study follow them the Bible says who through faith and patient obtain not are obtaining they have obtained the promise hallelujah run away from ignorance run away from it start acting blindly don't just act emotionally 
The moment you panic, blood of Jesus, Holy Ghost fire. Honestly, Holy Ghost fire. Hey, these demons you are hearing, Holy Ghost, you don't know what the fire of the Holy Ghost does. You don't even know whether it exists. You don't even know whether the blood of Jesus is there and what it should have. So you are just praying, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, blood of Jesus. It will never, I, I refuse to believe it. Then you start crying. Even you, you know you didn't believe what you said. Because at the end, you just start, stop praying and say, God, is this how you leave me? May people of confidence arise who know you see when you are walking by light you will not stop regardless of the result because you know the result will show it's like driving right when you are driving somewhere you don't get tired after five minutes and say we've not reached let me park this car you keep moving why because you know you will get there when people start practicing certain things and stop it is because they don't have a revelation that that is the key for every door, there is a key. You have a bunch of keys in your hands. The Bible calls them the keys of the kingdom. You have to painstakingly find out which one opens which door. I can have a bunch of keys in my hands. That does not mean the doors will open. How many of you have different doors in your homes that have different keys? You can see one small and then another one big. The keys don't replace themselves. You have to know which one. There are certain padlocks, you open them in a very interesting way. There are others you can close your eyes and just chuck it and turn and it opens. All in the same house. So there are things you can just come and effortlessly solve. But there are others you have to look at it with the eyes of the spirit. Ah, this is what I do. This is what I do. And I get results. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. May the days of shadow boxing come to an end in your life. Efforts that are not done out of knowledge, efforts that are not done out of out of accuracy, you will begin to be circumspect, and every action of yours will start producing strange results in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's take two more and then we'll pray. Is God speaking to you? Thank you, Jesus. Number what? Number four. Evil still exists. Write it down. Evil. The reality of darkness. The depravity. The existence of wickedness. The existence of darkness. Is a revelation that you must comprehend. If you want to walk in victory. Walk in triumph and have spiritual intelligence listen it is not only weakness it is foolishness to ignore the presence of evil evil still exists first john chapter 5 verse 19 let's turn there write it down and turn there. first john 5 19 Jesus, thank you. Can you play the guitar too for me, Binga? Just follow him and play. God wants to do something in this place. First John 5 19. It says, And we know. That we are of God. And then it says, apologies for the projection issues. I'll just read from here. You listen to me carefully. And we know that we are of God. Then it says, and the whole world lieth. It didn't say receives visitation. The world is lying. Like you say, this pulpit is lying on a, a rug, a carpet. Then it says, the whole world lieth where? In wickedness. Listen, I want to give you spiritual intelligence. The condition to be a victim of any attack from the devil is that you are born. Not that you do anything wrong or right. The moment you find yourself on this side of God's kingdom, immediately there is a contention. Every human being on earth is a potential battle axe. Satan will not wait till you become one. He starts attacking you from birth. He knows that everyone born of a woman carries the potential 
to be used by God. Are we together? Yeah. Apostle, what have I done? Who did I offend? Have you heard that, that culture-driven terminology? God, this one that demons are against me. Nothing works in my life. I didn't offend anybody. You don't have to. There is a story that predates your existence. Listen to the teaching, Pulling Down Strongholds. And a number of other teachings, Warfare Series. I teach there very extensively on the reality of wickedness. Many of us trivialize it until it attacks you. No. The Bible says, Woe to them who are at ease in Zion. Scripture clearly tells us that this world, living is a warfare. Living is a warfare. I think it's Dr. Paul Enenche who says that the world is a battlefield, not a playing ground. It's a real battlefield. Just start getting blessed and watch people hate you for doing nothing. You are trying to show you have money. Who did you offend? Nobody. Lie down and sleep and let someone not be able to sleep. He wakes up and is angry. Why are you sleeping? This is the world we live in. You have a neighbor who looks at you and sees you dancing, giving glory to God. And he says, all these arrogant people, I will deal with you. That begins attacks in your life. Please, listen to me. I'm sharing, with, I'm giving you spiritual intelligence. I have factored in my life that every day of my life until Jesus comes, somebody somewhere hates me enough to want to see me dead. Somebody somewhere hates me enough to go so only God knows how many people are in a herbal shrine now calling my name while I'm sleeping only God knows how many people are saying let him have a plane crash this year let him have a car accident this year so that all the mouth is making about the word of God so that people will be discouraged the problem is never the enemies the problem is you but to ignore their presence is a joke. <laughs> the psalmist, listen, Judas, one who was close to Jesus, used a kiss. A kiss is supposed to be a good thing, a sign of love. But to someone, it was a sign destroying. Brothers and sisters, hear me. I don't mean to insult your civilization, but I'm sorry to inform you that witchcraft is real. Say it after me. Witchcraft. Is in everyone's village here everyone is in the city is in zaria somebody somewhere is looking for blood and they are hoping that your own will be the one they are finding <laughs> you better grow up fast enough to believe what i'm telling you the whole world lieth in wickedness a man goes out in the morning and returns back with a sack letter that was the happiest day of his life but he returned back ask Job. Job was minding his business and consultations were happening in the heavenlies and all of a sudden everything began to fail in his life brothers and sisters I can look at a life and know that this life is under attack I have seen marriages under attack all of a sudden love dries up between the husband and wife for no reason the man is angry with the wife you ask him many times i counsel them i say sir what exactly did your wife do he said apostle i can't tell you this is exactly what she has done but i'm tired of this woman i have to look for another one then you know that hell is breaking loose madam why do you hate this man i'm tired i've not enjoyed my marriage from the day we've been married for 17 years not one day of joy madam you didn't laugh on your wedding day not one day of joy not one day of joy <laughs> yet you see videos of happy moments when they dance together not one day of joy and she's planning to leave that guy by Jesus for sure a man prays for the arrival of a child and have you seen people who look at their children and regret that they were married not because the child did anything from the day this child came our finance doesn't stay again what sort of a child is this i don't need a word of knowledge to know that your life 
is under attack all I need to know is did you say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ do you mean business about your destiny then your life is a project for darkness how can we make the word of God fail in pastor Alpha's life how can we make promise not become that thing how can we frustrate the purposes of God upon Benga's life that's the devil for you let me tell you something with Satan he's a patient fellow don't take his patience as foolishness he can be patient and wait for 20 years until the ministry expands enough for you to not pray again then he comes just like he said he would and destroy your life are we together there are many of us right now I know your life is under attack by your prayer life I see it you don't need a word of knowledge I know your life is under attack by the bitterness things you never would concede before are now at work in you I see the anger and the resentment you hate everybody for no cause it's not you Peter Peter Satan desired to sift you like wheat but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen thy brethren I look at a man and know his life is under attack all doors of finance is closed then four children become sick in one day he's coming the thief cometh not but to steal you always see his signature when he comes he leaves the traces a family that were once happy all of a sudden from nowhere you will see the lady will just come with one kind of trouble somewhere the guy will come with one kind of trouble somewhere the guy will start smoking he will come and speak to his father and say from today i'm a man you talk to me i slap you just when he's doing that they sack him from work just when he's doing that something happens his car packs out brothers and sisters it is not a test it is oppression hallelujah all of a sudden mysteriously people start dying within a region have you seen that happen just like in three weeks or one month men fathers of people just go away mothers of people just go away brothers and sisters just go away just like that five people lose their jobs within two weeks in your house don't tell me it's not an attack someone promises you i will give you a job even says complete everything you travel around the last stage someone just wants to sign and say what did you say your name is again Femi me I said I will help you call this person for me did I say this guy was part of them you say sir we even drank minerals that day say look I can't remember drinking any minerals leave this place I have seen witchcraft life in the lives of people I have seen families under attack no one rises you rise beyond certain limits the devil will not stop you but one day something happens and it crashes you there are ministries within certain regions that don't reach three years Zaria is one of those places the lifespan of any ministerial impact in this city is three years after three years a scandal must arise or something must arise and destroy you if you survive three years you are truly anointed you see it happen a musician comes into the city they are inviting him to every church they exhaust your grace in two months and dump you they are looking for the next person there is such evil like that there are men of god like that there are seasons where they are relevant for one year two years they are the talk of the town almost every church invites them after that you see them walk upon the street there are names in this nation and around the world i cannot even begin to mention people who were inspirations when you mention them they represented certain dimensions now they are as silent as a dead body wickedness is real evil is real one of us here showed me the picture of his father i think it was last week and i saw the man's legs like half of the leg you could see the bones sorry for painting a graphic picture no flesh it had eaten what happened to the man he was sleeping you know went to bed at night and all of a sudden someone fired an arrow to the leg he saw it 
and woke up just a slight pain a slight pain started eating up when i saw the picture it was irritating i said this is your father's leg just imagine dividing my leg by half imagine the toes knees you are seeing the bones that's somebody's leg alive today hiv people who receive their hiv not by a bad living but from dreams are you aware do you know when the enemy rises against you do you have the discernment to know or you just sit down and say we are all like that it's just nigeria you know i've shared with you a, a story I'll, I'll, I'll share it here one time i was praying I think I was in a fast and then I was praying and I've shared it here a number of times my the, the ceiling just disappeared like disappeared like that and all of a sudden I saw a big creature big like as tall as this from here up the eyes alone were like the head like my head imagine two of my head that's the eyes and then the tail was like a snake imagine another animal joined to another animal the tail had life of itself it could detach and live its life independently you know how you cut a worm and then the parts are, are, are acting that's how it was and then he looked at me with fierce anger and this is what he told me he said so you think you can bring the people of god into abundance that was a conversation red fiery eyes and after that the vision disappeared you think the devil is happy every time you are being transported? You think the devil is happy every time you are being delivered? You think the devil is happy every time you are being saved? Being healed? You think the devil is happy with this information you are receiving? That your life is being changed? You think the devil is happy that now you have been taught not to cry at challenges? In times of famine you should dance and rejoice. You think Satan is happy with that mystery? So imagine how much he would try to come against me let's do something to this man imagine how you would try to come against koinonia let's do something against koinonia <sighs> who is like him the lion and the lamb seated on the throne mountains bow down every ocean roar to the lord of lords Listen, when you find out that there is a pattern of pain and tragedy, I want you to know that hell is about to break its bank over you. And that is the time to arise. Before the throne, there is the cross. And you must know how to fight your way to victory. This is where spiritual laziness has cheated many of us. This is where the ministry of prayer has been absent in our lives the ministry of engaging the world for victory too much carelessness and people never rise they die at the cross there they die in the grave and there is no resurrection for them hallelujah when everything in your life goes haywire please hear me i understand that here and there one aspect of your life you may be trusting god but when every area of your life is zero if you have been finding out whether it's the devil, I answer your prayer now. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I know his signature. Everything cannot go wrong at once. Something is wrong somewhere. And so it is important you acknowledge it. And then you lock your door and find out what is the mystery of deliverance. Not what is the mystery of prosperity. What, why am I not getting a job? No job. No money no favor no open doors no anointing no breakthrough no helpers you are under attack don't wait until it kills you you finish treating yourself now two weeks later it comes back i guarantee you you are under attack 
the moment stomach pain is getting healed your eye starts as you are taking the last drug for eye your ear starts all of a sudden you hit your leg you're on your way going to your room that little hit you for two weeks there is no bomb that cures it that was not a stone that was more than a stone I remember one day I was praying and I was praying for someone a particular person in this ministry and then when I was praying the Lord led me to pray for that person and immediately I was praying you know how you blow somebody on your back physically like I stand behind you and blow that was what I felt physically when I started praying for the person do you know sincerely speaking I had to kneel down and lay my hands the pain was too much and I knew that person's life was under attack ah I said my God you have to arise and help this one I laid hands there no praise and worship let me tell you this there are prayers that prevail there are different kinds of tongues there are tongues for warfare it's not the tongues for just edifying your spirit man you do you know it will change believe me it's because you don't pray that's why you will never get there just speak anything and even you you know it didn't rise the day you lock your door i'm telling you this i'm telling you this you lock your door and say i'm not going out until there is a change i'm blasting tongues the spirit of god you will feel your tongues changing you will know this is warfare prayer you may not know what you are saying your mind is not fruitful but at the point your spirit the anger of your situation is added to your prayer you are not laughing praying nonsense you are thinking of who is calling no you are praying because you know that you are breaking through and at a point joy mm -hmm, one of the signs of the manifestation of the kingdom joy comes to you and for reasons you cannot explain you know that victory has been wrought peace comes to you he gives you a sign i tell you when you get that sign start dancing no power hear me this is how i live my life when i pray listen let me teach you some hold on please when i pray i don't stop until that joy comes i don't do all this i'm praying for 30 minutes one hour if it is in five minutes the joy comes that's when i stop pray you hold the universe you hold every one of us listen there are people here the moment a man appears in your life those spirits arise the lifespan of that relationship it will not pass two months no matter how vicious you are you thought it was just because you were bad no the best people in your family have gone through the same thing please listen to what i'm telling you i'm giving you keys that will give you victory evil is real hear me if you see crowds like this gathered inside and outside by the grace of God brothers and sisters victory was commanded in the realm of the spirit it didn't just happen you sit down there and allow Satan to keep blackmailing what you represent every time you want to bless people people say don't trust Benga I'm still suspecting him don't you know there are spirits that plant deception you blast them out in prayer someone wants to marry you all of a sudden a stranger arises she does not know she's under the influence of a demon this lady did a and b and c last year no sir the moment he wants to bless you he wants to do business with you and a night before signing the contract what million somebody calls him and say who did i hear you are doing business with be careful you see that let me tell you there are spirits i told you life is spiritual you keep watching things happen in your life you will never rise beyond some levels there are some of you the moment you hold money finances everything will go haywire till it finishes when it finishes everything dies by itself it's an attack it's an attack There are times some of you have received calls from me even in the night you were sleeping and you just had me call you and i say where are you 
what are you doing oh apostle i'm in this and that and that all right let's pray some of you have, have received calls i just call you I, sometimes i don't even know you you don't ask how i got your phone number i just call you and i say let's pray in the name of jesus a and b i see the numbers in dreams and the lord says call this person there is an attack over their family i just call you and off the phone you don't even know what happens some of you when the devil is about to buffet you the lord uses my face in your dreams here he comes shows up i tell you if you see me in your dreams start dancing i'm not a herbalist believe me it's a mystery god used the voice of eli to speak to samuel God uses a grace you honor that represents a ranking that can solve your problem. So when he shows up, he shows up with his covenant of possibilities. It's not Joshua Selman. It's the lamb, the lamb himself using the face of his servant. Listen, don't mind people who preach nonsense around. Say men of God use charm and herbalist to mind. Do it if it's easy to, to make charm. There are men of God I have prayed to command certain miracles in this ministry. And while I went to sleep, certain faces that I respect with respect to the dimension of the desire. Here they come, they walk up. Just like I come to you too. They come and sometimes they just speak a word. Sometimes they lay hands. When you get up, don't just laugh. You get up and receive it. This is where you miss it. You just get up and say, I saw a puzzle. And you are smiling. You miss your miracle. That's the time to dance. Shada Katai. It's done. It's over. It's done. It's over. It's done. It's over. Listen. Before this ministry entered a supernatural dimension of prosperity, I remember I was sitting. I'd been praying. I'm practicing this principle but I knew that it, it's like there was a resistance a resistance and that night I prayed my heart out as I was sleeping all of a sudden I was preaching somewhere in Canaan land and Bishop Oyeriko was sitting down David Ipiome was sitting down close to him two men I respect their voice when it comes to the aspect of kingdom wealth territorial wealth and they were watching me just like supervising a student on project I was standing on the stage I could not stand very well it was shaking and afterwards I came and Oyeriko asked me to empty everything in my pocket on his feet when i dropped it he said no there's still some more i put my hand i dropped everything and he laid hands on me somebody took me to a room i opened the room and i saw dollars i saw pounds i saw naira that was the beginning when that happened koinonia exploded like a charm there are mysteries you don't have spiritual intelligence you will never rise never rise some of you were this close to your breakthrough but you did not know what you saw you thought you had a dream only if you dance for 10 minutes that would have been the end of that problem but you did not know help those under the anointing you will the universe you will everyone on January this year I was praying and all of a sudden I was caught up in a vision and then when I was caught up in a vision the second time I would see Papa Adeboe in an encounter not a dream not lying down to dream the first one it was a pastor's conference and then they were serving food in a tray and I was sitting and he pointed me he said come and then I came, I saw pastors looking at me with anger and envy. And he said, sit down here, let's eat. I said, I can never do this. I've been trained to respect. He said, I said, sit down and let's eat. Two of us sat on the ground and we were eating. When I got up then, January, this one happened like 10 years ago. January this year, when God declared that it's a year of triumph, I had that encounter again. He finished doing something and then I came to him. And I can't remember what happened. And then he, I, I, have, I have it written down. And he looked at me and said, okay, I'm going to pray for you. And he started praying and he was laying hands and he was singing a song in Yoruba. Quietly, just laid hands on me and he was singing a song. And then when he finished singing, he says, now, 
I open up the gates. You know how he's just talking. I open up the gates of influence to you. Walk in it. And he told me, Baba, like you tell somebody in Yoruba, go, you can go. I've opened the road. Brothers and sisters, this is how, this is what we call encounters. You don't know it. How many encounters have you had and you missed it? Because if it is not perfected in the realm of the spirit, the same way you call somebody and shoot an arrow in the spirit and leave him quietly, then in the physical, two weeks, he's still moving alive, but he's dead. He doesn't even know he's dead. You see him and greet him. How are you? He said, in two weeks, it's my birthday. And you laugh at him. You killed him two weeks ago, yet he's still walking. And one day, he, anything can kill him because he's already dead. Anything. That's the same way when you are blessed in the spirit. Anything can prosper you. It's not about what you do. It's about something that has entered you already. You are the universe. You are shed it. you something about the operation of witchcraft there are only three ways witchcraft operates I will be teaching you next week and then I will teach you the last point on how to command victory but someone has learned something tonight you have been wasting breakthroughs you finish koinonia and sleep you finish your prayer and sleep and things happen in the realm of the spirit you get up and you don't permit them to happen in this realm don't you know a man must speak for things to manifest You saw your marriage, but you got up and you were shy. You were embarrassed. And you just laughed and said, ah, don't mock me. I'm not talking of all these demonic things where you are moving around, no. Listen, it's not every encounter in the spirit that is demonic. Some things God is telling you, the season has come. Especially when it's, it is emphasized. Two is the number of emphasis. Three is a shorty, is a witness that God has decreed that it should happen. But it never happens. Never happens. Because there is no spiritual intelligence. I don't waste opportunities in my life. The greatest of my battles are fought in the realm of the spirit. The realm of the spirit. The realm of the spirit. That's what happens. You've not commanded victory in the realm of the spirit. You are pasting posters everywhere. Come for my meeting. You are just wasting your money for nothing. Believe me. The victory. Miracle service is always finished before Friday. Koinonia is always finished before Friday. You don't come and finish Koinonia here. It's risky. Risky. You don't come for miracle service and stand on stage and say, it's time to be healed. Foolishness. That's not, it doesn't happen that way. From the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain. Then it was possible for him to be slain physically. If he were not slain in the realm of the spirit, he couldn't be, be, be saved physically. It always happens first in the realm of the spirit. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. I, I feel, I feel, I feel the air of some warfare prayers. We, I, I just sense in my spirit that we need to pray some warfare prayers. Listen. In the next five minutes, I know our time is up. But in the next five minutes, I release my faith with you and I want us to pray. We are going to force doors to open. You are not praying to edify your spirit. No. Every pending breakthrough. It has been declared. It's my season of trial. I have seen it in dreams. The Lord has confirmed it. I should be blessed. I'm not asking. I know it. It is a season. Pray, pray, Koinonia. It's a season of encounter with the anointing. I cannot remain at this level of grace. There is a dimension. I have seen it. He gave me a witness. He gave me a witness. It's my 
my season of breakthrough it will not happen like before now I have intelligence I will not waste the dreams I will not waste the visions I now understand I now discern every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the beaters crown you overcome you overcome every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's love says withhold not good from thy brother when it is within thy power to do it say not to him come today come tomorrow God has it now did you hear what I said now I want you to lift your voice and say now break through now break through now break through not next week no not next miracle service now favor now favor now break through come on Cordonia let God touch you. Now anointed. Now anointed. Now grace. I am 
Every high thing must come down Every stronghold shall be broken You wear the wings of surround You overcome, you overcome news I stop bad news it's not a suggestion it's not a negotiation you have declared it's my year of trial I stop bad news lift your voice and stop it lift your voice and stop it tired of bad news tired of disappointment I stop it I stop it have respect oh God to the covenant I stop bad news This is a word for someone. Never let anything to chance. If anything will happen, you will make it happen. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Listen, if you have never believed a prophetic word for any year, believe it now. Believe it now. Thanks be to God who causes us always, always to triumph. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Every vision you have seen that represents what God wants to happen in your life now, and was hijacked by any power in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God I command the expectation of God for you as revealed to you I command it to manifest now I command it to manifest now I command it to manifest now. Hear me. Any human agent that partnered with darkness to hijack any aspect of your destiny, let the fire of vengeance. You 
you see we've been praying vengeance here in the last two weeks just follow what God is doing I command it that has stolen anything from your life from your family and brought you disaster may the God of vengeance arise in judgment this night may the God of vengeance arise in judgment this night whoever will not let you go must go for you whoever will not let your destiny go must go for you I release vengeance the fire of vengeance the fire of vengeance the fire of vengeance the fire of vengeance I decree and declare every power that close your means of breakthrough in the name of Jesus I declare tonight let there be a warfare in the heavenlies we deploy angels we deploy angels the angels of God we declare are they not ministering spirits sent to minister to the heirs of salvation angels we release you war a good warfare release destinies release lives release favor release breakthrough in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. I decree and declare whoever is behind God's schedule for him, God planned that by now there are some realms of anointing you should have entered, some realms of breakthrough. Anyone behind schedule here, I want to push you by prophecy. So take a time. Pay attention. There is a grace for speed. I decree it. In the name of Jesus, upon everyone here, behind Shadul, in the name of Jesus, I command you, catch up now, catch up now, financially, catch up now, spiritually, catch up now. Anyone called Barry, anyone the devil has vowed that will not marry, anyone the devil has vowed to always have disappointments, I prophesy again, catch up now, catch up now. Listen, I don't know the chains that held your legs, but in the name of Jesus, by the fire that Elijah commanded from heaven, I decree and declare, may those chains break now. May those chains break now. May those chains break now. I pray for you, this night as you sleep, may my God show you a sign. God is a God of signs. God is a God of signs. My God, show your people signs. Signs of their victory. Signs of their breakthrough. This is how to receive your portion. Anything less than this, you are playing games. This is how you receive what belongs to you. The devil will not give it willingly. No. Whoever is yet to have at least one solid testimony from January 2017, in spite of the fact that God has declared, you clap for others. Hold on. I'm not just saying maybe a casual. There is no one here who has not seen the faithfulness of God but I'm saying there is nothing striking you cannot honestly say from January 1 till today 10th of March nothing constructive has happened in your life in the name of Jesus except I be not sent of God in the name of Jesus according to the election of God's mercy and grace I prophesy to you 
in seven days from today in the name of the Lord God who called me I command breakthrough 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 return with testimonies strength breakthrough help that lady strange breakthroughs the doors must open hear me tomorrow koinonia will be six by his grace we're not doing anything online leave all those things listen but i want to place a prophecy over tomorrow listen every time people celebrate birthdays they reenact what brought the birthday correct if a king is celebrating birthday he releases prisoners to prove he's a king i want to place a prophetic word Malatos i'm not speaking to you by faith i'm speaking to you by a covenant by a covenant i'm not asking you whether you believe me or not i'm just asking you to listen to me the lord that appeared to me the one who revealed to me that I saw a generation crying I saw men languishing the one who gave me his presence as a gift and brought the angel of his presence to walk with me I invoke the covenant of my altar that post cutter breast cutter I invoke the covenant of my altar oh God arise answer by the covenant I have with you tomorrow 11 March shake the nation change your people in the name of Jesus I place my covenant with God upon your life let there be strange results tomorrow strange results tomorrow strange results tomorrow strange results tomorrow, strange results tomorrow. all over hear me all those connected to this grace all those connected to this ministry following online I'm prophesying from 12 midnight tonight until 12 midnight tomorrow I declare it a day of strange miracles strange encounters strange miracles strange restoration strange impartation I declare an unusual release of angels over Zaria. I command it from 12 midnight today. I speak as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. 12 midnight this night. I command unusual angelic activities, confirming the mandate, confirming the mantle. Listen. Listen. This is what I want you to do for me. Please listen. This is what I want you to do for me. From 12 midnight tonight, anytime until 12 midnight tomorrow, I want you to pray. Take advantage of this unusual open heavens. I want you to ask whatever it is when you go back. Any long standing case. I want you, this is not by faith remember this is a covenant it is not i'm not just saying you are trying i'm not asking you whether you believe or not just do what i'm asking you to do use these 24 hours and watch something happen to your life that would never have happened i declare it as the word of the lord i place the word of the lord upon this prophecy it must happen to him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. Listen, no sickness survives tomorrow in anyone's body 
you have never seen me hospitalized you have never seen three put on my hands you have never seen me fail to come for koinonia because i was down i declare no sickness dwells in anyone's body tomorrow hear me whoever will continue to hold your destiny and will not let you go there is just about two hours i declare if they enter tomorrow holding your destiny i stand and i command the earth to take their body i say this in the name of jesus anyone who will not let you go i say it again if they cross 12 midnight this night i command the earth to take their bodies is not in what you have left there is a fibroid in your stomach but can you use your mouth as the seed to take away that fibroid your stomach was affected but you still have a voice you can sing you still have an ear your ear can be the seed the sacrifice of attentiveness to listen to the word of the lord can restore you no man is ever helpless if you understand the mystery of seeds and sacrifices. Every time things leave you, forget about them. Focus on what you have left. Lord, I give you all your things. I lost my job. Lost my wife. Lost my children. I'm all alone. And God says, that's all you need. You are alone with me like Jacob. Use your aloneness as a seed. Sow it and receive an encounter. An encounter that would bring them again. Job understood this. He lost everything in his life. The only thing he had was his conviction. And the wife said, lose that one too. So, why are you talking like one of these foolish women? How else will it come back? Job said, though he slay me, I have lost my health, but I have not lost my voice. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Elihu and all and co were talking all kinds of nonsense. Job came listening to them. And in chapter 42, Job said, well, I may not be able to give as I used to be, but I still have my mouth. I can be an intercessor. 42 verse 10, he started interceding for his friends. And God said, this is it. He turned his life around. And God turned the captivity of Job, 42 verse 10, when he prayed for his friends. Listen, there is always something in your life that can bring back something that left you. If this is the only revelation you have tonight, you will rejoice. Go back home and stop tear all of those sheets of papers that are archives of regrets and start writing what you have left. I still have my convictions. I lost a job, but I still have my certificate. Are we together now? I lost my car, but my hands are still working well. I didn't die in the accident. And when you put all those things, you say, Lord, I laid this at the altar of sacrifice. I tell you to bring back everything and everything. Sacrifice. Number four, very quickly. The fourth key to restoration is engaging the prophetic. The fourth key to restoration engaging the prophetic specifically prophetic utterances let me show you three scriptures that will bless you tonight isaiah 42 verse 22 please give it to us media isaiah 42 verse 22 but this is a people robbed and spoiled all of them are snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and non it, for a spoil. And there is no advocate that prophesies to them, restore. For you to ever experience restoration, there must be the introduction of the prophetic into your life. The prophetic, the prophetic. Either as an operation of the word of God or as a ministry of those anointed to walk in that respect. You have to understand what I'm teaching you.
without an encounter with a prophetic grace, a prophetic office, or a, a prophetic dimension of the word of God, there is no restoration. It's impossible. Second scripture, Psalm 119 verse 49. I found this scripture while I was studying and I felt it was very powerful and um, it would be great for us to see it. Psalm 119 verse 49. It says, Remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. Give us an Amplified. I want to explain to you what this scripture said. Remember fervently the word and promise to your servant in which you caused me to hope. In other words, the man of God came and told you he has a covenant with God and said God made a promise to him that when he stands and does certain things, he will hear him. And you are now saying, Lord, remember when that man of God spoke to me that something about his altar and his covenant can bring me break to I believed it. And he said, remember the word, the promise you gave your servant upon which I now hope that it will work for me. That's why sometimes you hear people say the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the God of Oyediko. So there is, it's not some religious, you know, whatever it is. It is a system of invoking the personal covenant. God, aside from the Old and the New Testament, God has personal covenants with men till today. God can enter a covenant with a man, a family, because of something that was done and say, look, whoever does certain things connected to this, I will bless you. God had a covenant with Abraham. Listen, and anybody and anything that came out of Abraham, a sad story later happened, and then Ishmael came out. When Ishmael came out, the Bible says Hagar, Hagar and Ishmael were in the wilderness. Two of them were crying. Only the voice of Ishmael was heard in heaven. Why? The Bible says God heard the voice of the young lad. A child is crying. The mother is crying. Only one voice is heard in heaven. Because God said, Abraham, you and anybody and anything that comes out of you. It's not God's concern whether it was a mistake or not. He is bound to it. It is still the reason why Ishmael today can still manifest certain dimensions of the blessing. Remember. The last scripture. Second Kings. Let's look at chapter 7. Actually, the whole is, is Elisha's encounter in Samaria, chapter 6, 7. But we're looking at chapter 7, just two scriptures. Second Kings, chapter 7, we'll read verse 1 and then we'll read verse 18. And Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. This is the prophetic now. Samaria as a nation was ravaged by so much famine that the Bible says women were eating their children. Mothers, please think for a minute. Think of roasting the leg of your child and watching it roast and yet not being afraid. I've heard of people drinking their urine because of test, but I've not heard of people eating their children. So Nigeria's recession is not as bad as it was here. The Bible says women, as compassionate as they were, were eating the same children. Eating your child is like eating yourself. The child came out of you. It's the same thing as cutting yourself and eating it. And this is what happened. And the prophet came and said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Listen. He said, Tomorrow, about this time, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Look at me. Let me teach you something profound. The miracle. This tomorrow was not something God revealed to the prophet and said, that's what I want to do. The, uh, the prophet chose the date when that land will be delivered. Listen, this is not revelation. It didn't say God revealed to me. In other words, I'm just giving you a superior information. There is a difference between revelation and creation. Revelation just gives you a prior knowledge of what is there anyway. Creation makes it appear and manifest. Like the testimony of our dear lady, 
who goes to her room and sees piles of money, physical cash. Now that's creation. Revelation is I can stand here and say there is a brown envelope in your room. Go and check it. I didn't put it there. I only help to guide you so you go and find it. This prophet was not creating. This prophet, I mean, he was not revealing. He was creating. He says, look, I understand that part of the privileges of prophetic ministry is to appoint to people dates. The realm of the spirit has events without dates tied to them. It takes the prophetic to appoint dates. That's why through the prophetic ministry, you can go into five years ago, pick an event that would have been your testimony that was corrupted through witchcraft and fast forward it and appoint a date in your future to make it happen. You have to believe this. Otherwise, how does God restore years? Are we together now? Time is only subject to this realm. The realm of the spirit is a compendium of happenings that are manipulated by the will of God and the intelligence of citizens on the earth who know how to make it happen. So there are events that represent the will of God. There are certain dimensions of his will that are fixed according to his predeterminate counsel. But there are others that are flexible left to the intelligence of the saints. Such as your miracle today. It's not God that decided that today will be your miracle. You would have chosen to remain at home. Jesus was passing a city called Nain. Are we Bible students? It was never his plan to raise any dead body. He was minding his business. He was not on evangelism. And he saw people crying. And then he said, what's going on here? And they said, there is a woman ravaged by witchcraft. Her husband that dead, her only son dead. And Jesus said, wait a minute, bring down that coffee. There and then, he decided the destiny of that woman. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This issue of one day, one day is faithlessness. You can insist. The Bible says today, if you hear his voice, you can choose and say, Lord, today, today, I'm tired of this hangover of nonsense around my life. Today is the day your faith can turn it around and bring you a miracle. You believe that? Say amen. Listen. You are the only one who continues to progress in time. The realm of the spirit does not progress in time. The time is bare. Are we together now? So in the realm of the spirit, you don't, there's no such thing as past and present with God. So when you say God, remember five years ago, you said you would do something and you did not do it. God said it doesn't make any difference. It can still happen. And you say, Lord, but I'm older now. God says, and so I can readjust it to still fit the older you. Lord, you gave me a word that I will marry at 21. I'm 35. And God says, no problem, I can do it. Lord, I plan to have six children. God says, it doesn't make any difference. Six years, two, two years with twins. My word has come to pass. Lord, you said you would prosper me. But this has not happened. I would have gotten a job. How much was the salary that time? 20,000. How much would you have had now? 1.2. God says, I give you an idea that brings you 2.4 in one month. Listen. Please, you have to believe what I'm telling you. Otherwise, we're wasting our time here. The prophetic is powerful. It can appoint dates for spiritual events and cause them to be made manifest. You've seen this happening in Koinonia. Somebody will write jam, for instance, and have 160 something. And all of a sudden, a word will come and you go and check it again and see 260 something. How do you explain that? Someone writes an exam and just remembers writing his name alone on question one. And then comes and a word comes and result comes out and is in 4.8. Ah, oh, please, brothers and sisters, we are intelligent people, but we are also spiritual. Never allow your intelligence take away the place of the realm of the spirit in your life. The same way you are seated here and say, Apostle, can God do it? Brothers and sisters, he can. Look at my life. Look at this ministry. The word of God. Can God cure that sickness? Yes, he can. I repeat, yes, he can. Can God turn around my captivity? Some of you are not sick. But what is wrong with you is better sickness than that problem. God can still turn it around. 
God can turn it around. In the name of Jesus, God can turn it around. The Lord declared and said, I shall announce to us that this miracle service is dedicated towards restoration. I truly believe every word of God. And I believe that one of the things God is going to be doing tonight is to call back things. Compress time for people. Call back things. Please believe it. Believe it. Believe it. I am a testimony. I've seen God bless people overnight. Overnight. Ha! He said, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Sometimes life can whip you to a point where you look up and say, God, I have served you. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't rob anybody. Why is my life like this? Then God tells you, locate the power of prophecy. Locate the power of prophecy. Some of you didn't want to come tonight. You can come and still look and say, wow, what an interesting service. Or you can come and say, Lord, it is within your power to change this situation. Why should we pro prolong it? It's within your power. It's within your power. You've seen the testimonies. We never announce anything here that is not verified. You've seen all the great testimonies. No matter what is wrong with your life, your ministry has crashed down. You were once on fire and once anointed and something happened. You can't tell what it is, but that grace and that unction doesn't look like it's there again. You are preaching and even you, you know you are not blessing anybody. Again, like the hair of Samson, it can come back again. My help, my help, my help, my father has died, my mother has died. I'm an orphan. There's no one to take care of me. Listen, let me tell you the truth. There are many fathers and mothers. Prophecy just needs to bring two of you together. Tonight, if you believe what I'm teaching you, you will be amazed to see the way the Lord will turn your life around. Turn your life around. Apostle, I was pregnant. Now I'm seated. Just give me a few minutes and watch a miracle that will bring tears from your eyes. I believe God. I am one man of God that believes God can turn around any situation. It will always be like The Lord will perfect that concerning me. Soon or He'll turn in my favor Turn it around me Don't cry as if jobs are finished A job is not with any government A job is in the word of God Listen to me Don't cry No Stop that tears It's a weak not When the book is open Tears will stop God didn't gather you here. Some of you traveled so far. There are some of you standing in the, in the rain, standing outside. God is too faithful to come and waste your time. In the next few minutes, I want you to believe this. Please listen, listen. Don't be part of those. Now is not the time to pinch around and hope. Will God do it? Apostle, I lost money. Apostle, I lost joy. Apostle, I lost a job. They blackmailed me. Able to restore, and let me tell you something God can restore fast, He can restore fast 430 years in captivity. One night, God said, That's all. 
when God arises, El Gibor, the mighty man, when he shakes himself and stands up and says, I want to lift David down, let me tell you, I don't care what which way. I have seen God lift people who were not even prepared. I ju he just chose that I want to make a specimen with this person. It doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. We're about to pray. I came here with all my heart, believing that God will restore somebody. If you belong to any of these categories, except you've not lost anything, you can sit down. But if you know there is something in your life that you know must come back, I'm not saying may come back, it's not a discussion. I've lost my joy, can come back. I've lost my peace, can come back. I lost my husband. God can fetch him wherever he is and return him. Hallelujah. Listen, we're going to pray for a few minutes. It will be very fast. I don't plan to waste our time here. We are going to be very fast. The message is already complicated. It's not when I start ministry. As soon as we start praying, I like you. Please, if you have never believed a man of God in your life, why don't you do this? Just, just be childlike for once and say, Lord, I believe the word of your servant. I open up my heart. I want you to open your mouth and call things back into your life. Call opportunities. This atmosphere is anointed. Call them. something with prophets. 
prophecy. The prophetic is very powerful. You can be acting, but in the realm of the spirit, I'm not just moving here. It is within the power of God. I have done this little, crazy, foolish, prophetic act. It's time for those who this word, you see, this thing I've done. Hold on, please. I'm not everybody. There are a few people as I've done this now. The Lord is asking me to do it three more times. As I do this three more times, if this, God will restore people. But it's not everybody that is using this prophetic act to restore. If you belong to that category as I'm turning the third time, that anointing, that grace, when it hits you, just know that God is restoring you. Just know that God is restoring you.
just flow with the spirit. Literally, there are some of you, you are going to feel a wind blow around you. And a garment is like a change of women. And he showed me Joshua the high priest. And he was standing and Satan wanted to rail an accusation. And he said, is this not a rod that I've taken from out of fire? In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, all those that God is changing their garment, Some 
success. It looks like the way you rejoiced yesterday before failure came. So you are even afraid of it. No. No. You were given 500,000 and you went and bought goods for your business. Then it crashed. Now God sends a helper. He's giving you 500,000. Instead of receiving it, he's reminding you of yesterday's failure and you are afraid. You are afraid of embracing your future because you think it will look like your past. In the name of Jesus Christ, I once again separate you from your past. I once again separate you from your past. I separate you from your past. I separate you from your past. It goes and goes forever. It goes and goes forever. Hallelujah. asking me to pray for people who nothing is working in their lives. Listen, this is a very serious prayer. I want you to believe this. There are people here as they are standing. Believe me when I say nothing is working. There are some, some aspects are working. We are still coming here. But the Lord is asking me to address issues. Some of you as you are standing here, inside and outside, online, if you will be honest with yourself, nothing is working. From marriage to finance to job to academics to life to health, everything is down. I want to pray for you. Everyone lift your hands. The truth is, you, you won't know it's the prayer that will tell you. Because you may think things are working. I want to pray for you. Inside and outside, especially overflow too. The one and the other. I'm just seeing rings of fire. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this category of people that nothing is working for. Some of you represent your families. Right now, in the name of Jesus, may that fire come upon you now and bring you breakthrough. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Nothing is working. I cause it. I cause the spirit. I cause the power. I cause the influence that is making this happen. In the name of Jesus. Bring them out. It's a very serious prayer. I'm still praying. Nothing is working. It's not like you are not moving. But it works for others till it gets to your tongue. Simple things that should open up, don't open up. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I direct an auction to your life and destiny. And I command you now, in the name of Jesus, by the ministry of the Spirit, be free from this evil. Be free from this evil. There is a family, and the family people are here. I stretch my hands. Let the power of God locate them now. Let the power of God locate them now. Let the power of God locate them now. You see, brothers and sisters, these are the things that stop you from experiencing results. My brother, come. You. Your salvation has come. Come and stand here. Pray to pray for you. Look at me. Hold on. This is your first time coming here. I'm looking at you and in the realm of the spirit. You belong to this category I'm talking about. Nothing is working. Huh? Even finances is the grace of God. Where are you coming from? Um, hold on. Please help that the ushers to help them. Are you Yoruba? You are Yoruba? Yes, sir. From Akure State? Yes, Where are you from? Ondo, Ondo State. Ondo is what? This one I'm saying, Akure or Ondo. That's what. You are coming from Akure. Yes. And because I'm seeing a car, and that's where you are coming from. Where are you coming from now? Akure. Sir. That's what I'm saying. The Lord is going to change your life totally right now. Who is Lake?
Section inside and outside. Prophecy is powerful when it's done with understanding. It can wipe your tears in one minute. Lift your hands. You are naked. I'm going to pray for you. Oh, is it Augustus? Yes, Augustus or August? Something that has been Augustus. Augustus or something. Augustus. I'm hearing. Like Augustus, please. We have to finish fast because we have to pray for the city. Augustus. Change the story. Jesus. Something just left you. You are sick. That sickness has gone now. In the name of Jesus. Look at me. My brother, you don't make it in life by hustling. You make it in life by divine direction. This is what God is saying. What's your name? Just bring them, but the name I hear is Augustus, but I will pray for you, something Augustus. My brother, hold my hands. This is not about hustling. Huh? It's not moving around. It's walking circumspectly by the Spirit and in grant you grace. Hold my hands. The Lord will wipe your tears in the name of Jesus. I bring this oppression to an end. That man holding pictures, run, come. Your breakthrough has come. Run, run, come. Stand here, where are you coming from? I'm looking at you. You are not in Zaria. From Kano State. You are from Kano State. Who is this? No, no, I'm not. I'm looking at your picture. My mom. What's wrong with her? Nothing is wrong with her. She gave me something for you. Your mom is sick. You don't know something is wrong with her. Hold on, please. If they are manifesting, just leave them. Please, let's be fast. I want to pray for you. See, hold on. Who is this one? She's my sister too. This is your sister. Yes. If I don't pray, I'm seeing this girl inside the coffin. Where is she? She's in Kano. Is she well? Yes. She's well. Yes. We have to pray for her. One of your sisters is sick. Yes. Sir. Is that true? Yes, Where sir. is she? She's in Kano. She's in Kano. The same thing happening to that one is about to happen to this one. Do I know you? That's what I'm telling you. God wants to change this thing now. You are a sincere person. Now what do you do? I'm a banker, sir. You are a banker. I will pray for you so that they will not cause trouble and steal money and you in your group. There's already trouble. Yes, Is that sir. true? Yes, sir. In your office. Yes, sir. And if I don't pray for you, they are going to sack you by August. I want to pray for you. Correct, sir. August. August. That's what Correct, stand up. That's what Correct, they told sir. you. Hold it. If I don't pray for you by August, you are leaving at once. But there is a God. There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. Come, sir. I don't know you, and I don't know how your mother got to know me, but your mother loves me with all her heart. Is that true? Yes, sir. I want you to tell your mother that her son is blessing her from his heart. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. I'll pray for you, sir. Huh? Because people have to be careful. There is a group, this bank group. All of you have problems. They are going to make you to pay some amount of money that is missing. And they are going to drive all of you. You meet the best.
mercy of God. Huh? And for your sister, this is witchcraft. God is coming in to step in. You're a very nice person to come in. In the name of Jesus. The same thing God is delivering you from is what is delivering the person shouting there. Let it turn now. I lay my hands upon the Ugechuku. Is it Ugechuku or Ugechuku or something? In the name of Jesus, I speak favor. Sir, look at me. As I laid my hands on you, I saw you climbing a ladder. Watch this. This is how you will stand here in Koinonia to testify. Listen. I want everybody to look at this brother very well. Know his face. Because he's going to come and stand here and testify of a dramatic breakthrough that God is bringing to his life. Is it Ugochuku or Ugochuku? Which of you came from Southern Kaduna? You come and stand. Your miracle has come. Jesus. Stand up, sir. What do you do? Watch with the in Kefi. Federal Medical Center. Yes, Kefi. I want to pray for you. If God were to do one thing for you, what will it be? You're a wise man. I want to pray for you. God is going to lift you. Do you know that the hand of God is upon your life? Not just for like hand of God, even to tell people about Jesus Christ. There is an evangelistic grace on yes. your life. Yes. God has revealed it to you. Yes. You know it. I've been doing that. I was together in your program uh, in soup. Two days program you came at Kev. Oh, I you were there the, at yes, the meeting. You were the part of the committee people yeah, there. Yeah. Because I see a man that God will use greatly in outreaches. I'm seeing signs and wonders. God will use you greatly. So I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let an anointing, something will come upon you now. I tell you, you will rise up from this night and begin to walk miracles like you held a champ. Receive that grace right now. In the name of Jesus, the same thing is happening to that person. I release that grace. I activate your spirit, man, by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come. There is a spirit troubling this brother. Stand up. Come. Lift your hands. Let him go now. Out. In the name of Jesus Christ. He came to receive impartation. What you need is deliverance first. There is a, a spirit that is oppressing you. Mama, can I talk to you, ma? Please. Where are you coming from, madam? Abuja. You believe that God is going to change your story. In the name of Jesus, you will. I want to pray for you. Please hold my hand because the Lord said, I should bless you. The Lord said, I should bless you. There is, I'm seeing, I'm seeing one. Kai. The Lord is showing me the vision of a lady. I'm looking at this table and I'm seeing, I'm not seeing a table. I'm seeing a lady. You are wearing like blue, a blue cloth with her tie. You are crying now, cleaning your tears. And you are asking the Lord that I will locate you. You are inside here. No, you are wearing blue. is coming. You wore something. Who is that? You tied your head with. Madam, run and come. You are the one I'm talking about. I will pray for you. Look at me. Where were you sitting? Where, was she inside here? Yes, sir. Where, is, where are you coming from? I'm coming from Kemi State. Kemi State. I'm going to pray for you. He said, I should tell you that he's bringing captivity to an end in your life this night. Captivity to an end. You believe it? Let it be yours now. The power of the Holy Spirit. My sister, look at me. Shame and reproach. I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing the face of an old woman. Hold my hands. Let shame and reproach leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus.
Jesus Christ, may the God that I serve lift you. May the God that I serve honor you. Your helper is in Abuja. We will locate you and help you and bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is somebody you are from Zuru. Zuru is in Kebi. Zuru Shabala Katabalata. sound of a child and the Lord is saying a child should come now two years two years two years where is the person come call the person's name now huh? no children two years no children we are going to pray she's not here this is your son he's the one here in the okay you standing for them mama why should you give birth to children and not see your grandchildren Somebody shout, no way. Shout it again, no way. The Bible says you will see your children's children. That's scriptures. It didn't say you will see them on your deathbed. You will see them and dance and rejoice with them. Mama, do you believe if I pray for this lady now, she will come back and testify here with a child? I believe in Jesus' name. It will happen. You believe, what's her name? Her name is Adama Isa. Adama. Adama. In the name of Jesus, become pregnant. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This one. Yeah, the medium. This is the one. No, no, I'll pray for him. This one is again. Winter. Winter. In the name of Jesus, I declare you are blessed. Mama, the pain you feel in your back sometimes. Diabetes. Oh, I will pray for you. You have fibroid. Yes. You have diabetes. Yes. You have ulcer. Yes, sir. What does this look like? You see how the devil is? Fibroid, diabetes, ulcer. A woman like this. Then her own children. Barrenness. Then this one. There's no speed in your life. Come and stand here. You, are, you that you are the gentleman, there's serious retrogression. I have to pray for you. Huh? You love God, but you are not moving forward at all. I have to pray for you. Huh? Is that true, Mama? Okay. See, you can repeat, repeat, repeat. 
That's what I'm saying. It's not moving forward. Yes, sir. You believe in the message I just preached that God is a restorer. I believe. My Jesus. Brother, it's not that you are lazy. There is a spirit that manipulates your results. You have been repeating forever. I have to pray for you. Lift your hands. You are the one I will start with first. Father, let me end now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands on your mind and I command by the power of the Holy Spirit to have the mind of Christ. Right now, over. Mama, that's it. It's over in the name of Jesus. I pray for this, your children. Pray for this. Where is he? Husband. Yes. We were from Plato State. We live in Kano. Mumta and Bokos. Okay. In Aeke, she made it. Yeah, no, Kano. We have to pray for him. Because I'm seeing a serious spirit of delay in his life. We have to pray for him. And I'm seeing he's having a problem already with his wife. He may not tell you. But this is something we need to pray for. Um, I hope you are not embarrassed. No, no, sir. In the name of Jesus, we pray for you. Mama, let me pray for you. All sad that diabetes, fibroid, and um, and and ulcer. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command every single one of them, help her, let it go now. The same way it came, let it go. Every house has an entry and exit. Let this be the exit of this now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A lady is going to shout now under the anointing. God is removing fiber from someone's stomach. Now, this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. We are going to pray for the sick now very quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone, I'm seeing this. malignant groups, I command it now in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit a loud shout is going to be someone with that loud shout that's the end of it, it goes now never to be told in the name of Jesus, lift your hands before we pray for the sick I want to challenge every strange spirit that is responsible for sabotaging the purposes of God in your life, lift your hands as I minister deliverance to you, it doesn't mean you are possessed. No, no. The operations of demons is such that they can take advantage of mechanisms, provisions in the realm of the spirit to manipulate people. I want to pray for you. I have to do this before we start praying for the sick. Inside, outside, I want you to be ready. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Father, anyone under the influence of any spirit, please get ready and pray. I see mighty deliverance is happening. Any strange spirit in this place that is tying down the destiny of anyone. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. One, two, three. I command you to leave now. Go now. Go now. I command in the name of Jesus. That is in the blood of Jesus. I cause altars. I cause yokes of darkness that might protect the destinies of men and sabotage the purposes of God over their life. Be free now. Be free now. Lift your hands and still pray. Lift your hands and pray. For time's sake, you may not need to bring them out. Just, just leave them there inside and outside so that we can call those who are sick and pray for them quickly. In the name of Jesus, I declare every influence that is attached to your family, the family that is trying to rob you, right now in Jesus' name, I declare and declare fire is coming on you now. Fire is coming on you now. Fire is coming on you now. against your life in the day and in the night is speaking against you 
I stand here tonight in the name of Jesus and I stretch my hands towards you. If there is anyone inside, outside, under the sound of my voice, who is a victim of the speakings of altars, I command them to die now in the name of Jesus. I cause those altars, they cease from functioning. I cause those altars in the name of Jesus. You used to see physical rings on your hand. Physical rings, then it will disappear. Who is that? There's someone here like that. Please quickly let me pray for you. Don't be embarrassed. I want to pray for you. The Lord just gave me a revelation. Sometimes you look at your hand and you will see you think it's a vision. Rings, like ring on your hand. You started seeing it in your dreams, but now physically, sometimes you see it. Whether the person is inside or outside, except if they are under the anointing. But please, I would like to pray for that person as we pray for the sick. Don't be ashamed, don't be afraid. It's a very serious thing I need to pray for you. This, this madam, come. This lady, the lady wearing lime, come. I want to pray for you. Witchcraft comes to an end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a small child within the ages of maybe 1 to 11. Now as I'm praying, the power of God is going to come upon that child and the child will start manifesting. I'm seeing this is, this is some demonic, diabolic thing. I'm not saying the child is bad. I'm just showing you what the Lord is showing me. Father, wherever this child is, I pray for our children now. Whether it is an initiation, whether it is anything occultic, I'm, I decree and declare right now, by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever that little child is, I command those devils to live now. Yeah. I command those devils to live now. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ, yeah. I command those devils to live now. Yeah. Very quickly, we are going to pray for the sick. There are so many things God is doing in the realm of the spirit. There are so many things God is doing. There is a brother the power of God is going to come on him now, overflow to the one at the road. Please, I want you to bring him now. I want to talk to him. Overflow to. I see an angel of the Lord moving across overflow to. And the fire of God is falling on a brother. Please, I want that brother to come. The fire of God will suddenly fall upon that person. Please let him come. Carry him and, and bring him. I want to prophesy to him. I'm going to give us a prayer point now. While we are praying, we are going to ask people to come so that we'll pray for the sick very, very quickly because I want to be able to have time to prophesy. Remember, I spoke about restoration. I want to use time to prophesy. Now, watch this, please. Overflow one, all the overflows, those who are sick in body, I want you to, when, when we finish praying, make your way to your various overflows and wait there. There will be people who will come to minister healing to you. We believe in the ministry of miracles. God has anointed us for this purpose. And by God's grace, we are not too many that we cannot lay hands on people one by one. And that's why we do that. So that everybody will have that sense of, I may not be able to lay hands on people outside, but there are men and, and women of God anointed and they will be able to also minister to you. Praise the Lord. Please make sure you are sensitive outside. I want to pray for that gentleman. That's him. Ah. Let it end now. I stretch my hands towards you. I bring it to an end. There is sorrow upon sorrow on this gentleman's life. The Lord is asking me to wave my hands. It comes to an end now. This guy is not the person. No. Just, just leave him there. At least he has received his own. Who is this one? From outside, overflow two. The person is supposed to be shouting. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let this end. I'm stretching my hands. In the name of 
Jesus I command the power of darkness over your life and over your family to be broken right now in the name of Jesus Christ I breathe the life of God into you and I decree and declare that it comes to an end now um, I know there are many people here there is a gentleman please I don't do these things to disgrace people but there is a gentleman here um, you are thoroughly addicted to taking you know you always hear me say that thing what's the name of that thing that thing. but your own is not just codeine alone it's plus whether smoke um, some of these funny things you are here and you are tired of it but you cannot stop please where are you please don't waste our time there's a gentleman that i need to pray for seems to me like that person is outside inside please if you are here don't be embarrassed i want to help you end this i know there are many people but there is a specific person god is talking to me about let's just flow as a holy spirit to stop here please that gentleman i want you to come out here and i want to lay my hands and end it you are tired of it but you can't stop no matter what you do that's what you spend your little money on and this thing is crashing your life and destroying your destiny where are you let's appreciate him hallelujah listen look at me Jesus said, he who does not have sin should cast the first stone. When we call people like this, we don't condemn people. I love you with all my heart. The meaning of my name is the way to love. I love people. You look at these gentlemen, you can see the way their lives are. You see how disorganized they are. This is the devil. If we don't pray for these people, this gentleman one day will become a father. It doesn't matter. I prophecy for one is for all. Come and join them. I want to pray for you now. Please, one minute. If you are if you are still thinking about it, just remain there. But you are saying, man of God, I'm tired of this thing. You have to help me. Quickly join them. God gave a word for one, but I'm praying because we have to pray for the sick quickly. Some of you, nobody led you into it. It's a spirit that just pushed you into this thing. You love God, but this thing is killing you. I salute your courage. I don't know if I would have had the courage to come out. I salute your courage. Come. Let, I think we should honor them. Come on, Koinonia. Apostle, does it matter? Of course it does. Of course it does. Of course it does. When I start praying, please don't come out again. If you are still coming, I want you to rush and come. Male or female, I don't care. Whether you are a male or female, it doesn't matter. I, I, I perceive that there are even ladies, male or female. Jesus is setting us free. So there's nothing to be embarrassed about. It. Please come and stand quickly. Male or female, Koinonia, celebrate them. still coming let's give them one more minute since God is already talking to them now let's just take advantage of the anointing here apostle I don't take it all the time still join them you take it the most important thing is that you take it even if it's not all the time you take it join them and let God help you look at me brothers and sisters I'm your friend I love you with all my heart like I said, you may look at these boys. Please, let me give a disclaimer. Hold on, Mike. Be careful when you look at people's children and just point and think they are bad. These people need help. I interact with these people all the time and they will tell you they don't like it. It's a spirit. Some of them, nobody took, got them into all of these things just by themselves. Some of them had dreams. Some of them had strange encounters. But my Bible says, God bless you. Don't be ashamed. Come and join. Please give them room. Honestly, let's, let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. If you are joining, come. The Bible says, for this purpose, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy. That this, this, you see, this smoking 
and drinking thing is a terrible thing. You carry cough syrup, snuff it till you are almost dying, pass out and come back again and still do it. And then others sell that, that leaf that they tie. You collect it, smoke it and all of that. Look at me. I want to pray for you and I want to pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Your coming out here does not make me better than you in any way. Are we together now? We are only, we are only benefactors of the grace and the mercy of God. I'm agreeing with you. Most people complain. Most people gossip about you. I'm not gossiping about you. I want to help you. Koinonia as a family loves you. Now listen, let me challenge all of you, please. After this prayer, huh, all of you are automatically members of prayer department for the next one month. You are welcome to prayer department for the next one month. Praise God. So, this is how we do it here. I won't deceive you that once I just pray for you, you go back and meet those friends. They will laugh at you and laugh at me and say forget about them. And then before you know it, you will go back into those things. One of the laws of, of influence is atmosphere. You open yourself to an atmosphere and destroy you. So after I pray for you, um, ushers, what will happen is you can get their names and their details. We we'll forward it to the, um, the prayer department and then we'll keep following up with you from there. You need to keep praying. You need to keep building your spirit. You need to be taught the word of God. And by God's grace, we're helping you. Some of you here will be doing what I'm doing some years to come. You will hold this mic in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you here, the ladies, you may be the wives of great men of God, evangelists and apostles. There is nobody, there's no such thing as hopelessness. To him that is joined to the living, there is hope. Stretch your hands, saints of God. If you are a mother here, stretch both of your hands. If you are a father here, stretch both of your hands. And say, use them as a point of contact. Whether your children are small or, or not, use them as a point of contact. We pray for you. We are praying for you now. That the power that is responsible for this living will end. I make contact with you. Causing trouble for somebody is not the way it happens. God can help you and God can bless you. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. If I've not touched you, just let me know and I'll lay my hands on you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I lay my hands upon you. I command that spirit to leave you. I command that devil to leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that devil to leave you. I cause you are standing in for your brother. Where is he? What a wonderful lady. In the name of Jesus, I use you as a point of contact. As it's happening to you, let it happen to you. And hold on, don't go. Ah, okay, you are directing them. Okay. We decree and declare. Have I prayed for you, gentlemen? In the name of Jesus, all of you are my friends. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we break this addiction from your lives. Join me and say Amen. Pray for any association that will not let you serve God. I command those associations from today. Let them be a dissociation between you and them. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Let's appreciate them very quickly. Now, we are going to begin to pray. Have I prayed for them? Have I prayed for you? This guy, you are going to be a man of God. This brother, this gentleman. Bring him. This young man is going to be a man of God. You need guidance and mentorship. There is a call of God upon your life. Huh? That we we and whatever it is that is stealing the call, we curse it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ.
Jesus Christ. Self time in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every challenge in my life must come under the authority of Jesus tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Those who are seeking God, they are watching. Those who are seeking body, overflow one, two, three, inside. us to bring the healing power of God to people and we are very happy. We will continue to do it. Some of you are standing for your loved ones. God has made this place a, a solution center and we honor him for it. Now, please look up. We are going to do two things very quickly. Um, overflow 1, you can go to your projector stand. Overflow 2, your projector stand. Overflow three and every other one four, just join them somewhere there. Someone will come to pray for you now. Praise the Lord. While they are doing this, how many of us came with our prayer request? Hallelujah. Now, what I want you to do very quickly, those online, you can post it online and uh, we're going to connect with it by faith. If you have not written your prayer request or you've not written for your loved ones, do it quickly. The ushers are going to be waving the, a basket. Please, let's do it orderly. Just wave your prayer request and they'll locate you. You'll drop it there and we'll bring it to the altar while we pray. Very quickly. Praise the Lord. Pastor Ejimi will be outside, overflow one. Pastor Ejimi and Pastor Femi, overflow one. He's going to be praying. Pastor Alpha, you'll go to overflow two. Um, together with Mike. Mike, you'll follow him, overflow two. Overflow three, Benga and Promise. Two of you will be at overflow two and uh, overflow three and any other overflow there. Praise the Lord. We'll do it that way. Father, together we release a corporate anointing for miracles, signs, and wonders. We decree and declare right now that as we begin to minister to God's people, do a quick walk. Let incurable situations go. Let cancers go. Let HIV go. In the name of Jesus Christ, anoint everyone, oh God, that you are going to be using to lay hands on these people and let there be dramatic testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, God bless you. Please, let's go very quickly. We have, let's try to see how we can cover this in 15, 20 minutes. Are we together now? God bless you. Lord, thank you for healings. Thank you for miracles. Worship team, you help us. Bless us in Jesus' name. Please accept, listen. Please accept the people laying hands on you, ask you. You don't need to tell them what is wrong with you. Just stand by faith. Praise God. The prophetic is at work. If there is need to prophesy or talk to you, just receive by faith. It doesn't mean we have to touch the area. Just believe by faith. You go and check yourself or call your loved ones. faith. Hallelujah. This is not a ritual that we do. This is a revelation that God gave and an instruction that every miracle service we receive the requests of God's people. No matter how we try to reach everyone we are constrained by time and um, so we are presenting it to the Lord. These are the things that attempt to say Jesus did not die. These are the things that attempt to say the work of the cross was and is a lie. So we bring them before him and we say, Lord, these are the obstacles that stop the revelation of your victory from being established in our lives. And we trust this fire to descend upon them. Stretch your hands by faith. Stretch your hands by faith, believing, believing. 
I want you to pray and say the request I'm dropping here is the last one. The last time I will be dropping this request. Please pray. Shabratukasi. We still have more, please. Those online, this is the time you connect with us. Those outside, you can stretch your hand to your, your projectors. God is doing miracles now. God of wonders. Jabada. Let the angel of the Lord pray. Now arise, O Lord. in the name of Jesus. Those who have been assigned unto death by reason of this prayer, they are delivered from death. Those who have been assigned unto failure by reason of this prayer, they are declared a success. Lord, turn around age-long captivities. You declared unto us in this miracle service that you are bringing restoration. I prophesy that anointing upon this request. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let there be strange restorations right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I want to pray for you. This is the last segment. I want us to connect. Our time is gone. We'll do this very quickly. Please lift your hands as I pray for you. That which God gives us. It is our joy to always dispense it to the people. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I decree and declare right now, every dry book, every dry situation, every hopeless situation in your life, receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Everything called dead in your life, 
dead finances, dead relationships, dead career lives. In the name of Jesus, hear the word of restoration. I prophesy, let it come back to life now. I prophesy, come back to life now. Come back to life now. Come back to life now. Every issue that has been a lingering issue for a long time and has refused to leave your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus, let tonight be the last night you will see it. Let tonight be the last night you will see it. He said, these Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more forever. I command that you see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every door that is supposed to have opened up to you, and we don't know why it has refused to open till now. In the name of Jesus, at this June miracle service, I swing those doors open for you. I swing those doors open for you. I swing those doors open for you. For those who are asking God for direction for the next level, beginning from tonight, receive encounters that give you direction. Those outside, make sure you are connecting. Receive encounters that give you direction. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak over your life every gift that is not yet speaking every grace that is you is still dormant within you whether spiritual gift or physical gifts i decree and declare right now ability locked up on anyone here that has not found expression I decree and declare life to your gift life to your ability in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. I want to pray for you there are many people here you are not working in spiritual gifts Paul said, I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that he may be established. I stretch my hands to you. Out of the abundance of help and God's grace and mercy, something is coming upon you now. I decree and declare all nine gifts of the Spirit revealed in Scripture alongside others that have not been recorded at the count of three. Oh God, according to the faith of your people, let there be a distribution right now. One, two, three. Take it right now. Right now, take it right now, take it right now, take it right now. Step into those gifts. I release it upon you. I open up your spirit. I open up your understanding to be fruitful towards this gift in the name of Jesus. I declare upon you the mantle of favor that has made the difference in the life of ordinary people. Granting them access to platforms, access to people, access to resources. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive that mantle right now. Take that anointing of supernatural favor. I impart it upon your life. I impart it upon your life. Hallelujah. I pray for you right now. Everything that represents dishonor in your life. The Bible says, where thou hast been deserted, so that no man passes through you, you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. I speak over your life. The kind of honor that lifts you and distinguishes you above your contemporaries. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Ministry here, come back to life now. Every dying business, help them, help them, please. Every dying business here, come back to life now. In the name of Jesus, every dying destiny here, I command you, come back to life in the name of Jesus. Every dying career, come back to life in the name of Jesus. 
destroy your prayer life so that your the fervency of your prayer life has gone down in the name of Jesus I found those calls to come back alive I found those calls of your prayer life to come back alive in the name of Jesus I pray for the spirit of revelation like never before access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to the operation of the world receive it right now receive it right now receive it right now i impart upon you the gift of faith let it be yours now in the name of jesus i impart upon you the gift of faith capacity to do impossible things receive that grace in the name of jesus I decree and declare one by one beginning from tonight the same way Noah opened the door of the ark and the animals started coming by themselves I command everything that should be in your life and has left you the same anointing that drew the animals one by one to the ark I command you to throw your blessings to your life now to throw your blessings to your life now listen Noah did not go to look for the animals he just opened the door the same way you have opened the door of your destiny I command I'm saying it again I want you to believe me it doesn't take time it only takes the right word into your life I decree and declare again between now and the next month's miracle service let there be strange testimonies of restoration strange testimonies of restoration whatever has not been working in your life right now whether it's your academics your marriage whatever it is I force it to work now Anything called barrenness in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Whether they are here or connected by faith, I command anyone called barren become a joyful mother of children. Become a joyful mother of children. I pray for your finances. Whatever makes this thing hard for you, I curse that spirit now in Jesus' name. I decree and declare illumination, grace to know what to do, and grace to succeed at whatever you do. Receive it in the name of Jesus. For those who are students, whether on campus, the university, or any other campus, I declare, most of you are on break now, you are about to resume. As you resume, in the name of Jesus, I put life to your academics. I command missing scripts to be found. I command wrongly calculated results to be corrected. In the name of Jesus, as you prepare to write your exams, I prophesy like rain from four points upwards. I prophesy like rain. Hear what I'm saying. I prophesy like rain from four points upwards. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone here trusting God for a job? In the name of Jesus. Between now and the next 30 days, may the God of heaven arise and give you a job that will bring tears to your eyes. Finally, I pray for you in the name of Jesus that if you have never stood here to testify, listen to what I'm saying. If you have never stood here to testify in the name of Jesus, I stand in partnership with Jesus, the firstborn of the begotten, and I command that God will give you a testimony that will be too big for you to remain on your seat. A testimony that will be too great for you to remain on your seat. A testimony too big to remain on your seat. I decree and declare the spirit of death. 
there is a strange manifestation of the spirit of death it always comes like a circle looms over territory and takes the life of people i declare let the seal of the blood the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family in the name of jesus let the seal of the blood the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family i cause accidents i cause any kind of tragedy from coming to any family in the name of jesus christ finally i pray for you i command in a way like never before the helpers of your destiny i speak over your life the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers even if they came before i call them again thank you for lifting gone but i cannot let us go without giving an opportunity please everyone stand any of you let's honor this altar call quickly help, help those under the anointing there are people here standing and saying man of god i want to make it right with jesus some of you gave your hearts to him but for some reason things began to go haywire and you're saying man of god i want to return back some of you are yet to make this decision please listen to me inside and outside wherever you are you are saying man of god if you will pray for me i'm ready to surrender my heart to jesus i'm ready to start afresh or start anew wherever you are i want to count five please if you are coming i want you to run clear the way for them our time is up and we have to be very very fast there are so many other things to do wherever you are as we begin to clap for you i count five you should be here please run like there's fire on the mountain one those coming from outside please protocol help them clear the way for them so that they come quickly quickly two koinonia appreciate them as they come run to jesus christ overflow one two three four everywhere please quickly three Please double up, double up, rush, rush, run and come. We're out of time, but this is a decision that is eternal. Come and encounter Jesus. God bless you. Come and encounter the power of God. Come and have a fresh start with him. He that did not withhold his only son, but offered him freely, how much more with him shall he give us all things? Keep coming. Three. Four. Five. Praise God. If you're coming, join them quickly. Those of you here in the front, I salute you. I congratulate you. While the rest are making their way coming, please, wherever you are, run, come. Catch up quickly, quickly. Are you rushing, please? Help us so that we can be very fast. We need to attend to people after service. I'd like you to lift your right hand and say this convincingly. Say this passionately. Say this sincerely. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you died for me you gave your life for me it's a powerful prayer you are praying tonight i've heard your word and i believe in you i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that jesus is lord over my life i believe that god raised him from the dead and i declare that eternal life is mine today right now i am a child of god my sins are forgiven i have the life of christ in me in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted i stretch my hands in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven i set you free now by the power of the holy spirit and i decree and declare that you begin to enjoy the ministry of the holy spirit in your life i pray for you that you will know the lord like never before 
I declare that the power of sin, the power of the flesh, the power of Satan is destroyed completely from your life in the name of Jesus. I declare that you have a new start from tonight and the Lord himself will continually be glorified in your life. You go forward ever and backward never in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise, I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.